So I'll be talking about read-only re-entrance sim. Uh, my name is Yanis, and I'm a smart contract auditor. I work for Chain Security, and for the past five years uh, with Chain Security, we have secured some of the most uh, famous uh, DeFi protocols. And sometimes we find very interesting attack vectors, as uh, the one I'm going to describe today. Uh, actually, this uh, attack was found by a colleague of mine named uh, Kenan. So first of all, why should we care about this attack? Why this attack is so important? So it's actually quite a quite novel attack. Not many people know about this, and it's often neglected by both auditors and uh, developers. So this attack uh, is based on the interaction between different protocols, and these interactions uh, get more and more uh, popular since you know, we build uh, based on these uh, DeFi blocks. Uh, what makes this attack more interesting is that it actually affected protocols that integrate uh, with uh, Curve Finance, one of the most famous uh, exchanges out there. And as a matter of fact, uh, the total funds that were at risk were more than 100 million. So we're talking about a lot of money here. So first of all, what is reentrancy? So a reentrancy takes place when an execution of a smart contract is interrupted and the state has not been fully updated, and the control is passed uh, to another smart contract, which can then call again a function uh, of the smart contract whose uh, state uh, hasn't been finalized. And up until now, the traditional reentrancy uh, was concerned only um, with entry points uh, that modify the state. But as we will show, this is not the case uh, here. So. Just to give you the textbook example of uh, a reentrancy, we have this uh, reentrant contract, and users can deposit and withdraw uh, Ether from it. And actually, when a user tries to withdraw, then uh, when the native Ether is sent to the receiver, the receiver has the opportunity uh, to run arbitrary code. And what a receiver, a malicious receiver, can do can call this withdrawal function again. And since uh, the state has not been fully updated and his balance is not set to zero, they can successfully call withdraw all again and essentially get uh, more ether than what they had deposited. So this can be easily fixed and people uh, deal with this problem by introducing this uh, non rental modifier. So if we visit uh, the same function again, uh, we cannot call withdraw all again when we receive uh, the ether because uh, the lock is uh, true and the whole transaction uh, will fail. However, nothing prevents the malicious user from uh, making a call to another contract which reads the state of this contract. So if someone reads the state at this point, what they're going to see is that the total supply has been reduced but the, 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 the balance of the user has not been set to zero. This means that the ratio, for example, is not going to be correct. So this is a different attack from the known uh, reentrancy. So uh, let's get to, to Curve and what happened there. As you know, uh, Curve is a decentralized exchange. Uh, there are many pools in Curve. Uh, the pool that uh, was affected by this attack was the uh, a pool that contains native ether and uh, staked ether. And as you might know, uh, users are liquidity providers. They can uh, add liquidity to a pool, and of course, they can remove liquidity. So what happens when users remove liquidity? Well, first, the LP tokens they hold is burned. So we can think that uh, the total supply of the LP token is reduced. And then, one by one, the tokens are sent uh, to the user. And the first token that is sent is native ether. So upon receival of this uh, native ether, a user, a malicious user, has the opportunity to call an arbitrary, uh, to make an arbitrary call. Of course, they cannot call uh, a curve because uh, it's protected by a non reentrant modifier. However, what they can do is they can call, make a call to another protocol that, for, that reads the state of this pool. And how protocols usually read the state is by using this uh, get virtual price function that I have down below. 
So let's inspect this a little bit. So the get virtual price depends on this D factor, which uh, depends on the balances. Remember, we have only updated the balance of the ether, but not the balance of the staked ether. And also depends on the token supply. And remember, we reduced the token supply. So what we achieved here is we essentially pumped uh, the, this uh, get virtual price. So this uh, function is used uh, to give an approximation of the value of the LP token. So imagine that we have a protocol that holds uh, these LP tokens. During this attack, uh, the price of the LP token is pumped, and then the protocol will think that it holds more money than it should. Read-only reentrancy is still a reentrancy in the sense that uh, the, storage is, uh, the storage update is not uh, fully finalized, but the big difference is that we read the state. We don't try to access a function that modifies the state uh, of the function. So, how can we prevent this attack? So, one way is to, to make this lock that I showed you before uh, in the non reentrant modifier, to make it public. This works for new protocols that uh, you know, are being developed, but what can we do for old protocols? Well, the, thing, the solution that we've seen uh, to be more efficient is when you try to read the state of a, a smart contract, uh, first try to call a function that is uh, non reentrant protected. If this uh, call fails, then it means that you are in the middle of a reentrancy and you shouldn't uh, read the state of the contract. So that's it for me. Actually, we just published uh, this attack. Feel free to, to read more about it. Thank you very much.